Linda. Bye. Good morning, and um, thanks for joining us for Miracle Monday. We're so excited to share today a little bit about, um, a little bit from our book, 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class by Steve Siebold. And um, so I'm actually really excited about this one um, this week. But before we jump into the number 33, let's chat a little bit about operating with a clear conscience, which we learned about last week. Was there any anything from last week that kind of stuck out to you a little bit? Um, about operating with a clear conscience. Are all of my dealings congruent with my conscience? Did this help you to uh, make decisions any differently this week? Did it make you notice how you are or are not congruent with your conscience? Any thoughts on on that? I love the questions. Yeah. I love the questions. Is it is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build good goodwill and better friendship? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Yeah. Soul searching questions. Yes. So good. And it and so helpful because, you know, sometimes we're sometimes we're just irritated or whatever and we want to just gab about stuff that's going on. We want to vent or whatever, but it's really mm -hmm. good to self-regulate by looking at these things and making sure that we're that we're being true to because it's it it damages ourselves also if we're not being true to <laughs> to our own conscience or to um principles of behavior that we espouse to or that we believe in um you know as whatever whatever value based um kind type of person that you are so you want to be you want to be in that place where you're not living by lies, but you're being true. You're being true to yourself. And um, yeah, I love that. All maybe right. We Any... need, maybe we need a um, a bad thought dumping session somewhere, right? <laughs> journal. <laughs> maybe that's black journal, that right? Write and burn. Black journal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was something that we learned from Kurt Duncan was to carry a, a little notebook around and write down those entrapping thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Be able to yeah. just kind of get those out of your mind. And then it's it's interesting too, um, because like there's the write and burn technique where you write all those negative thoughts and then you burn them. But there's another technique that he taught us that is to trap those thoughts into into a place and then observe like go through and number the thoughts and then observe how many of them are similar and like what are the it's really interesting because as you gather data on your own negative thoughts you start to see the types of things that you're being personally attacked with but you could also be be if there's like a problem with another person you can start to see where um where your thoughts are spiraling around that and then and then look for a solution so that you can clean those things um those things up i think that's really valuable so wow. powerful yep really really good um i'm i believe i have videos on my youtube channel about both of those techniques so mm -hmm. i will look for them and put them in the link um in the in the description underneath this um if i can find them i, I know for sure i have the right and burn one because i have a song with it um but i'm and i and i remember making and i remember seeing the the one about trapping those thoughts and um, gathering the data so to speak but i don't remember if that ever made it to youtube or if it's like stuck in my google drive somewhere anyway i'll look for it <laughs> see if we can find it so okay so for today, we have number 33. This is common sense is the foundation of high performance. And Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote um, Uncle Tom's Cabin, said common sense is the knack of seeing things as, as they are and doing things as they ought to be done. And I have heard and felt uh, very much in the last few years that common sense is less common than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I like this mm. definition of the knack of seeing things as they are and doing things as they ought to be done. So, and this again goes with kind of that truth telling or living not by lies when you're seeing something as it is, 
then you are not, you know, like fooling yourself in a lie of what society thinks it should be or thinks that you should say it is or whatever. So those are all kind of interesting. But let's see what we have to say about the foundation of high performance being common sense. So champions usually believe the essentials of life were learned in kindergarten. Their worldview is that success is simple and constructed fundamentally from common sense. While average people search for complex answers to their problems, the world class looks for the simple solution first and usually finds it. They solve more complex challenges by looking at the situation as an outsider viewing it for the first time. Larry Wilson, the famous speaker and author says the great ones get out of their own way by viewing the problem from 10,000 feet in order to gain a new perspective. They separate themselves from the everyday details and gain a three-dimensional view of the problem. While average people strain to create a solution, champions think for a while and then create a mental distance to take their direction, <clears throat> excuse me, their direct focus off of the problem. Many times the answers will come to them in the shower, in the middle of the night, or at the health club while they're working out. The law of indirect effort is due is one of the most powerful problem solving processes known to man champions realize the secret to tapping their true genius is sometimes hidden in the act of not trying so hard okay i love this right what are your thoughts any thoughts you want to share on this lots of answers come in the middle of the night or just before i go to sleep or right when i wake up quiet time. yes Yes, when your mind is more relaxed and able to just like kind of like something is able to just kind of sneak in and give you the solution you're looking for. This, I love that. This is a lot like the Jack Rabbit Factor book that I've talked about how um there but it adds one more thing where you see the problem solved and then don't worry about it. Like yeah so, allow that right. emotion to come in and just relax yep. about it and just yeah just feel it done and see it done and then and then go about as as though it is done and watch the things fall into place i mean you still would want to try and do the things that <laughs> need to yes. be done obviously right that, that make it happen like when you're guided to do to do things but stressing over it basically isn't the helpful thing. And I'm with you. I have had so many answers just come in the shower when I'm not stressing about it is when yes. I see the answers come. Yes. And I, I do think that letting your mind relax is just such a, just such a powerful tool to help you to move into that space of just allowing, allowing the answers to come. And I think also, um, I love this where he says, viewing the problem from 10,000 feet separate themselves from the everyday details, gain that three-dimensional view instead of straining to create a solution. And that's really key too, because you think about the um, the stress involved when you're like, I got to figure this out. I got to figure this out. Oh my gosh, I got to figure this out. Like you, that's so much stress and so much pressure that you're putting on yourself like you're not already doing um okay like you know you're not like it's just like this is like, nothing is okay until this is solved you know and that's a lot of pressure that you're putting on your mind which doesn't allow your mind to relax and let those ideas simple solutions kind of flow in so really really good any other thoughts about this one before we wrap it up and do get the action step in place. Um, our action step for today is to write down your five most pressing problems and ask, is there a kindergarten answer to this seemingly complex problem? And then let your mind revert to childlike thinking and write down the first answers that come to mind. So that's nice too, of just like, is there a kindergarten answer? and then be open to that possibility. Because I think sometimes our ego or our pride gets in the way of just being like, no, this is not something that's gonna be simple to solve. Um, and so if we can allow that and even ask the mind, like, is there a simple solution to this? And being able to just kind of break it down. I'm trying to think of an example of a simple 
simple solution where I relax. I will tell you in my business, um, when we made gold, I had taken my kids on a vacation to um, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, where they they had lived there. We were we had all lived there when they were little. And my sister lived um, a couple hours outside of Oklahoma City at that point. And so we had flown in to Oklahoma City and it was so funny and it was so fun because this was, they were like, I think the youngest was um, maybe 12 or gonna about to be 13 or something. And the second to youngest actually turned 14 on our, on our vacation. But um, we, they had, um, their dad had flight privileges and so they all had had standby tickets. And I think, I can't remember if they were all able to get on the same flight or if they came on two different flights, but I had to pay for a ticket. So I flew in and got a rental car and then I just waited for them all to get there. And it was just super fun because like, I don't know about you, but my favorite session of, you know, parenting was definitely the teens. And, and especially because I had mine all in five years, right? So I had this whole pile of kids that was just, and they were just the funnest, funnest people. But anyway, um, as we um, kind of went around and we showed, we talked about like where they had lived. I showed them different locations. We took a bunch of pictures and, you know, the Oklahoma, the red dirt, the bridge, the, I took them on the roads that they used to, you know, think they were on a roller coaster or whatever. Like we just did all this kind of nostalgic stuff and it was just super, super fun. And um, on the last day of the month that we were there, which was March, 31st, um, somebody called me from my, um, from my downline and was like, I need a solution to this problem. And I was wondering if you had some recommendations. And so I made a few recommendations. I had no idea like where I was as far as my, um, because I'd never made gold before and I'd always made silver really easily at that point. So I had no idea where I was in the thing, but that order put us over what we needed to make gold. And so we, I woke up the next morning, logged into my back office. It was my son's birthday and was like, we made gold. Like it was like the most <laughs> magical, amazing thing and, um, and kind of a shock. And then um, another time I went on vacation, um, I had gone to Prague to get some training from Elise, but let's face it, like that's a training meeting, but it's a vacation. And it was so amazing. We were, you know, visiting castles and we were doing all these, you know, shopping in this little medieval town and just doing all of these really, really cool, very mind relaxing um, experiences. I was with people that I really liked and um, it just was so enjoyable. I was just like having this experience that I'd never had before. And it was interesting because we had um, just put our house up for sale. Um, my son was expecting a mission call, which I knew he was going to get, but he was living in Alaska anyway. So I knew I wasn't going to be there in person for that. And then um, my daughter and her um, boyfriend were also, I knew they were getting a little bit more serious, but anyway, all of these things happened at once. We got an offer on our house. Um, we, um, we uh harrison got his mission call and i happened to still be at the airport at the time that he was um that he was reading it live online and then my daughter um got engaged and so i was right there shopping on that day and i went and bought her this beautiful piece of bohemian lace um and i bought one for myself to match um just to kind of commemorate this fact that my daughter was getting married i wanted to give her something beautiful and something special and it was really cool because tim's heritage is bohemian and anyway it just felt like everything just kind of came together and there was nothing that like i was supposed to be right there to make sure that i was there when my daughter got engaged or what you know what i mean like you feel like you have to be in all the places but it just really super spoke to me that and I, and I thought back to when we had made gold and how, you know, I'm like, I should go on vacation more. Like everything good happens in my life when I'm on vacation. So I tried to make my life a lot more vacation-esque. I like that awesome. one. All right, let's go on vacation. Right? <laughs> yeah, so. 
How about but, that, yeah. Linda? Did you feel that way when you were gone for a month? Uh, <laughs> yes, I could just relax and not worry about anything here. Yeah. Uh, and did and some did of your problems the solve up. themselves? Uh, yes, they did. The, nice. I, I learned to look at stuff in a different perspective because, you know, things will work out. Don't stress over the small things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Your five most pressing problems. Write those down and ask, is there a kindergarten solution uh, or kindergarten answer to a seemingly complex problem? And then let your mind relax and revert to childlike thinking, not childish thinking, childlike thinking, and write down the first <laughs> answers that come to mind. So okay awesome well i'm going to end the recording and um thank you again for being here and go ahead and add your comments down below if you're catching us on the recording and thanks for joining us